Welcome back to another video where I'm Big Brother 26 and this is going to be a review of episodes 16 and 17. Now, I know I did not do a review of episode 16 and I got to say the episodes that come on on Sunday they come on a little bit later than the Wednesday and Thursday episodes. Like it doesn't come on too late but it like by the time it goes off like the process of getting the video together, like getting the notes together, recording the video, editing the video, making the thumbnail, posting the video, like all that is like, I don't know, like I feel like it's a little bit too late for me. I work Mondays and like, I just don't like the process of having to post it on Sunday and then like I can't even really promote it because I post it and then I go to sleep. So I can review it on Monday and post it. Or I could just talk about it with this because like, I don't know, sometimes the Sunday episode is actually important because it's the fallout of the nominations and sometimes it has the HOH. But I do want to talk about it a little bit. So it was a wall comp. We all knew it like as we were, like Thursday we knew it was the wall comp. And I mean, I have to say, I, so both. So this was an iconic week because we have the wall comp and the hide and go veto. And I have to say, both of these comps, they didn't let me down, but like, they definitely were not like they used to be. So the wall comp, it didn't even go an hour, I don't think, right? It, I don't think it went an hour, which is insane to me. Like, even like some of the people that were dropping off so early, I was like, what? Like, I wasn't expecting even Chelsea to drop off as early as she did. Uh, I actually expected Joseph to last longer. Rubina lasted long, like she was in like the final four or final five or something like that. But I expected her to last longer than 30 minutes or like 40 minutes, however long she lasted. I was surprised when Cam fell. I was surprised when Quinn fell. Like we don't know how long Tucker could have lasted because he obviously won the competition. But mainly like I was just so surprised about how fast these people were falling off this wall. Like, But maybe the wall comps have been a little bit like quicker in recent seasons. But like those, like those comps used to go on for hours. Like that's insane to me. I don't know. Hopefully we get to see another endurance competition this season, and it goes a little longer than this one. But uh, Tucker won, <laughs> and I have to say I was rooting for Quinn because this is a part I don't understand. So Cedric's eliminated or evicted, and I see the fallout that a lot of people actually felt the same way I felt in my review. Like, a lot of people were like, oh, he was so sweet, the nicest guy, why couldn't it be someone else from the Pentagon? Preferably Cam. But anyway, so, like, I'm glad that he got a positive, uh, review coming out of the season. But I was completely rooting for someone from the Pentagon to win, because it's like, why is it that everyone, like, okay, Tucker runs this house. He's top dog, and number two, like, I guess number two is Quinn. That's his opposition. But everyone's following Tucker now. So that was just another majority alliance. Everyone's following him. And then you have Mackenzie, who just is lost. She has no alliance at all. That's why I wanted her to stay, last you know, last vote. But that that's why I wanted Quinn to win. Because I'm just like, all right, we need someone to take a shot at Tucker. Then I also think, like, when Tucker leaves this house, I definitely want him to make it to jury, which he's going to at this point. But, like, when he leaves, what is this house going to be? Because, well, I guess we kind of said that about Angela, and now Angela's kind of like a, not a background character, but she's not as big as a character as she was. But let me get to, and I'm still on Sunday's episode. Uh, Tucker won HOH, and he nominated Pentagon members. Quinn, Cam, Brooklyn. So now we see the fallout from that entering episode 17. So, Tucker says that he's about to pretty much BS everyone on the block, pretty much. Everyone expects him to be targeting Quinn, but he's actually not. He's actually targeting Brooklyn. He says, like, she's the head of all this stuff. In my head, or, like, I'm just like, where did he get this from? Is it just because Brooklyn was supposed to be in the six points, or what was it, five points, something like that? She was supposed to be in alliance with him, and she, like, wasn't? Because I'm like... You weren't in the collective, so how do you know she was pulling strings, which she wasn't? Like, I don't think collective really had a leader, personally. Like, yeah, Joseph started it, but Joseph definitely wasn't a leader. Maybe Chelsea, but, like, the problem with the collective and the Pentagon is they weren't making moves. Like, they got out people that, like, Lisa wasn't targeting them, so they got out Lisa because she was annoying. Lisa wanted, well, actually, we don't, uh, Lisa wanted Angela out, so she wasn't targeting them at all. Then they kept going after Angela, who was like a house target. Like, that, you could let Mackenzie take Angela out, and Angela's still there anyway. Then they got Kenny out, who, like, who cares? <laughs> I, I don't know who Kenny would have went after, though. But, and Cedric's the one that got Kenny out. And, like, right? 
right? I think that's who it was. And like Kenny liked Cedric. He liked I liked him a lot. That was actually like one of his top five allies. And then the first guy was Matt. But I mean they that was Angela's HOH. So the the two weeks that the Pentagon was in charge, they got out people that they shouldn't have. So they weren't really making big moves. So that was their problem is they had power and they did nothing with it. So now Tucker's in power and he's getting them out. So Tucker talks to Cam in Brooklyn and lets them know that his target is Quinn. Like, y'all are good. I'm, you know, y'all are just up there. Quinn's the target, obviously. BS's them. Then he talks to Quinn. And he basically tells Quinn that he's not the target. So, but he didn't really tell him who it was, I don't think, if I'm remembering that right. I just put, like, he talked to Quinn. But I think he told him that he wasn't the target. But yeah, I just don't get where, why he's not the target, personally. Like, where, like, he says Quinn's not a threat to him. Quinn is openly going after you. Brooklyn wasn't. <laughs> like, I, and I'm not just defending Brooklyn because she was my favorite and maybe she was my winner pick, I think. I don't remember. But she, she was my favorite. And remember last episode I said she was becoming a mean girl. I wasn't really vibing with some of the stuff she was saying. This episode, holy cow. And last episode, like, these two episodes... Brooklyn was holy cow, like way too much, but we'll get to it. So we see this scene of Kimo telling Tucker about the collective and telling him about the Pentagon. I don't think he used the name Pentagon though, because Kimo got all this information from Quinn. Like I said, every everything is known in this house. Nothing is a secret. So Tucker got all the information about the Pentagon and the collective and all that stuff. Tucker just blames everything on Brooklyn. Uh, and like I said, I think he's hurt that she was included inside the five points or six points or whatever that alliance was called. And she was also in another alliance. But she was in the collective before she was in that alliance. So I don't know. He hates Brooklyn. Like Brooklyn is his new Lisa. And then we see a scene of Brooklyn and Quinn where they were vibing. They're, they're really close. They were Pentagon members and they've always been pretty close. And Tucker or Quinn tells Brooklyn like, I'm a pawn. And Brooklyn's like, oh. And Brooklyn knew at that point that she was the target. So, but this will come up later. Then we see a scene of Brooklyn being a mean girl. And also throughout this whole episode, Brooklyn was inside the DR being very confident. I will say, very confident. Like I said, she on episode one, she looked like a badass. Or episode one or two, whichever one she was in. She looks like a badass. She looks like a boss. She was talking like a badass and a boss. But the thing is, Brooklyn doesn't have anything to back it up. She hasn't won anything. She hasn't, like, what big move did she actually make? Like, people keep saying that she's a great player, and I love her. I, I do like Brooklyn. But it's like, what has she actually done? People keep saying all this stuff. Like, she's best friends with Chelsea, and everyone sees it. So it's not like she has a low-key, like, the collective is out there, so everyone knows she was in that alliance. Everyone knows she was in the Pentagon. What? What did she do that was so big? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. it. Seems like they just don't like her. But nonetheless, we get this scene where I guess Angela got a bunch of gifts for her birthday or something last week. And one of them was this food tray. We've all seen this tray before. It's got the meat and cheese and all that stuff. And apparently Brooklyn opened it and started eating it. But it wasn't just Brooklyn. Everyone was eating it. But Brooklyn's the one that opened it. <laughs> and poor Angela was so mad. It was... Like, I feel like Big Brother did this to me. Sorry, guys. My camera ran out of storage. I have not deleted anything from this camera since I started doing these reviews. But anyway... I feel like Big Brother showed this scene with Brooklyn and Angela just to villainize Brooklyn more so that like it'll be known like Brooklyn is the enemy because they really like Tucker. This is my opinion. That's what I think. Me saying that's probably going to get me to never be on Big Brother. I'm sorry, guys. Please put me on your show. But I did think it was kind of mean of Brooklyn not to ax. She could have at least axed. Um, but Angela, like... I feel like Angela most likely would have said yes. Like, y'all can have some. Just save me some. Or I feel like she would have because, like, it's the nice thing to do. Like, save me some or put me some up so that I can eat it later. Because, like, she even said, like, that stuff don't go bad in, like, a couple of days. It goes bad in, like, weeks, which I'm pretty sure we all knew that, right? It's, like, but nonetheless, it made Brooklyn come off as very mean, and it wasn't nice to do. Like, she could have asked, but... Yeah, Brooke, like, Angela's like sad, like crying. It was definitely dramatic. Next, we get to the veto picks, the veto player picks. And we have, of course, the, the HOH and the three nominees plan. That's Tucker, Brooklyn, Quinn, Cam. And then the extra two people, they pull out McKenzie. And then Tucker pulls out his own name, and he picks Joe again. So those are the players. And we get the scene of Brooklyn confronting Tucker about what Quinn said. And to be honest... It's another scene where Brooklyn came off really bad because she definitely 
threw Quinn under the bus. She definitely did. And I felt so bad for Quinn because he was really confiding in her. And he really liked her. And he was looking out for her. And he said that later on in the show. But, yeah, Tucker got caught. And he kind of just, like, said, everyone knows who my target is. Come on now. Like, all this shit. All that stuff. But, yeah, that happened. We go outside and we see that it's the famous Hide and Go Vito. If and when I'm on this show, this is definitely one that I want to compete in. Uh, I'm terrified to compete in the wall. I, <laughs> I know I'll do bad. I just don't want to be one of those people that falls off before the show comes back from commercial. So the wall I don't want to compete in. I hope that I'm an outgoing HOH when the wall goes on. But Hide and Go Vito, I have to compete in it. And then uh, Otev, of course, I want to compete. And I kind of low-key want to compete and slip and slide. <laughs> Just, I don't know. Remember when they used to do that one challenge with the chicken wire and getting the egg through? Remember that one? I don't know. So everyone hides their vetoes. We all know how this game is played. Uh, Mackenzie hit hers under a plant, which I thought was the best hiding spot. It was right in the, in the door when you first walk in, and she just took the plant out, put it at the bottom of the pot, and that was her hiding spot. Uh... Tucker hit his in a drawer, behind a drawer, which I feel like would be like an easy hiding spot. I feel like that's, if I was in the house, that's probably where I would think to hide mines. But like, apparently he did it in a way where you have to open two drawers just to get to it or something like that. I don't know. Quinn was trying to find a super good hiding spot, but he just couldn't. And he only had like two minutes and a half. So he decided to put it inside of his suit that he wore a couple days ago or weeks ago or a few ago inside the suit jacket so he put his there Brooklyn put hers inside of Quinn's dirty clothes which was just weird inside of a bag Joe put his in Angela's bag which then he put it at like the foot of her bed or something like that and who's the sixth player oh Cam put his inside of a, a pillow a firm pillow with a blanket on top of it so, these hiding spots weren't very good. <laughs> I personally thought that McKenzie's was the best hiding spot, but then, like, it, it's funny, because I thought McKenzie's was the best hiding spot, and it was, hers was found first, and I thought Tucker's hiding spot was, like, a common spot. I felt like, like, everyone would try to hide in a drawer, like I thought, but he won. But <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, the, the competition was fun and all. Everything went well. Cam found two. Uh, Tucker found McKenzie's immediately. I feel like these things were getting found fast. But the big thing that came out of this was the house getting destroyed, right? And Tucker being upset. Brooklyn threw clothes around, which was, again, her being mean because she was the only one that did that. And then we had DRs of Tucker saying, I'm not about to trash the house looking for this. And uh, I think uh, Joe said the same thing, and they were just upset. But my thing is, in previous seasons, that house gets wrecked. Like, wrecked. This season, the house wasn't even that messed up. It was clothes everywhere. If she didn't do the clothes, like, I mean, there was trash. It was, it just wasn't as messy as, look at Big Brother 19s. Oh, my God. Big Brother 19s. Big Brother 20s. Mattresses flipped over. Like, look at those ones. Like, I, I feel like this was, like, light work. This was not that bad. And so, Tucker wins, right? Tucker wins. It came down to Joe and Tucker. Tucker wins. And they go into the house. And everyone's freaking out about everything, the clothes especially. Brooklyn did it, and she just looks like an awful person. And I was just like, man. Oh, and Tucker's blaming Quinn, and he's so upset, so mad. And I'm just like, man, this house. Y'all would not be able to compete in Big Brother 19. Well, you don't want to be in Big Brother 19, actually. Y'all would not be able to compete in Big Brother 20, where Brett was like... And that's another thing. Brooklyn tried to play off Brett with a defense thing. Her veto was found like second. <laughs> like uh, none of these hiding spots, none of these hiding spots were good. I'm sorry. So, but yeah, I just felt like they were over exaggerating about the house. So this is Tucker's six comp win, and we're not even at jury. I think we're on like what is this week four, week five? That's insane. Because yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it when I had this epith epiphany. Chelsea or Brooklyn tells Chelsea that she was the one that did the clothes. And Chelsea laughs. I'm like, oh, man, y'all are getting a horrible edit. Like, y'all are just coming off as mean girls. This looks so bad for y'all. I feel bad. Because this came right after Tucker had just yelled at Quinn and was cussing at him and all this stuff. And that's another thing I got to say. Tucker is not a nice person. He's not. So I'm confused as to why some people like Tucker no matter what. I I'm just saying that. I'm just saying because, like, people are villainizing 
Brooklyn online. I'm not just saying this because she's my favorite, but it's like people are acting like she's such a horrible person. But it's like Tucker has done just as bad or said just as worse to people. But it's like Brooklyn does it. She's a mean girl and she gets all this devil horns on Twitter, all this bad bashing and all this. And then Tucker can fuck like he's been going after. Quinn for how long and it's just fine? Like, I don't know. I don't get it. But then eventually Tucker and Quinn did have a conversation on the balcony or something. And uh, Tucker said, like, basically that he's alright. Like, they're cool. And uh, Quinn said that he know he messes up. He messed up and he feels bad that, you know, Brooklyn betrayed him and stuff like that. It was a cool little scene. Oh, and another thing, Quinn also said that he did not do his clothes. He did not touch Tucker's clothes. He didn't touch anyone's clothes. So then, Brooklyn, then Tucker had a brain blast it was Brooklyn. So then we get to the veto ceremony. And I uh, hope you guys are comfortable because it's about to get real uncomfortable for a lot of different people. Tucker. And everyone's wondering what he's about to do and all this stuff. Uh... He basically calls out the collective, calls out the Pentagon, so he basically did this. He called out a group of eight by name, the collective, then a group of five, not by name because I don't think he knew it, the Pentagon, then out of those five, he went after Brooklyn and Chelsea. I, the two girls in the alliance, I guess, are the two masterminds. What did they do? I'm confused because Chelsea got out Lisa. <laughs> I'm confused. Chelsea got out Lisa, Cedric got out Kitty, and then the next week, like, they weren't even in power no more. So I don't, I don't know what that was about. Whatever. Next week they went home. Pentagon went home. So I just don't get it. I just don't get how they're such good players. Like, why the house thinks they're such good players. But the way Tucker was talking to them, this is when I came up with the epiphany. Like, oh my God, he's running this house. He's number one. Like, he's number, he's top dog. And there's a clo there's a big drop for second. I'm like, who is second? Then I'm like, oh, I guess it'll be Quinn because he's the opposition. But once Tucker's gone, this game is different. This whole season is so different without Tucker because he's the main guy. And he was the main guy even when he wasn't. When it was the Angela show, it was still the Tucker show because of what he was doing. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, he takes Quinn off the block and puts Chelsea on the block. We didn't get to see Brooklyn go back at Tucker because apparently that happened during the veto, but that, we didn't get to see that. But after the nomination ceremony, of course, Quinn's super happy. And I like that Quinn said that he's going to act like he's buddy-buddy with Tucker. But the first chance he gets, he's taking him out. And I'm like, you have to. You literally have to. If you don't take Tucker out, when is he going to leave? And at this point, Tucker, when he does leave, is going to win a battle back. Because, like, who can he not beat? He has so many comps. He's on track to break the record for comps. Six Six already in week four. Like, we're not even at jury. I will say again. After nominations, Chelsea, she was just shocked. Like, oh my God, like, just seemed like what? Because she said that even if she would have won the veto, she wasn't even going to use it on one of her friends because she wanted to stay on Tucker's good side. But Cam, he was locked in. I like his response. He was just like, I'm about to go win AI Arena, which <laughs> I hope you don't. And I hope actually Chelsea don't either. I want Brooklyn to win. That's what I'm rooting for, to win AI Arena. And Brooklyn just came off as way too cocky, way too, maybe his confidence, but cocky, but it's just like, saying this stuff out loud, you've been saying it for two episodes now, like, I'm gonna win this HOH, then, I'm gonna win this Vito, first one out, like, this is her second one out, and it's just like, I don't know, she's coming, she sounds very badass, she sounds very much like a badass, but she's not showing it, like, you gotta win something. You gotta do something. Be sure to leave this video a like, comment, subscribe, share it on all forms of social media. And until next time, y'all, catch you later.